YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I am back uh, with another scenario battle. This time, uh, the scenario will probably be a little bit looser compared to history than the last time, even though the last time obviously didn't go exactly according to scenario. Uh, but hey, that's okay. Um, that's what makes these kind of things fun. So, what are we going to be doing today? So, on the last, so remember, in every scenario battle video, you get a chance to vote for what you want the next scenario to be, and it can come from any of the Total War games. And we'll even include Warhammer in this, to be honest, once we uh, we get it out. But we'll include anything. Um, so, what got chosen this time? Well, let me pull it up here for you. So, what got chosen this time was the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Danes versus Saxons in Charlemagne. So we have a pretty close matchup for this, for what this person asked for. Axed for. Yes, axed for, because it is Danes. Uh, there will be some of that going on. Um, I read a little bit, so I, I don't have time to pull in much more than the Wikipedia version of history on some of these. I know a little bit more about like ancient history, way more about ancient history, I should say, than I do the medieval time period or even this dark age time period, or whatever you call it, the Viking era, whatever it was. I don't know much about that. Um, you know, I think for people growing up in Europe, it was probably a lot more fascinating, whereas in America, although I do think the Vikings came to visit <laughs> uh, the Americas, I don't think that we really focus on them as much. Don't get me wrong, though. There's there's some Vikings fans here, especially in Minnesota. They like the Vikings, too. <laughs> but I'm... <laughs> How about that lame joke? <laughs> all right, so yeah. Um, so what am I going to do for the Battle of Stamford Bridge? Well, I'm going to start off by saying, first of all, Maximus Decimus Meridius, which I've talked about a lot on this channel in the past. He's a YouTuber. He has an absolutely beautiful video about the Battle of Stamford Bridge, and he does this thing way more justice than I could ever hope to. So I have a link to that in the description, and I highly recommend you go watch it if you enjoy anything to do with this scenario. Go check it out. He did a fantastic job. So yeah, go look at that. So what am I going to do today? Well, mine's going to be a little bit looser, looser, like historical recreation in which we play a similar type scenario to see if history repeats or if history is rewritten. So let me tell you a little bit about the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Again, I am not huge on the history here, so if I make a mistake, feel free to correct me. And This is pretty much the Wikipedia version. So, um, it was Kingdom of England versus Kingdom of Norway, and this was uh, in September of 1066. Um, so yes, uh, that's roughly the time. This was actually, if I remember right, isn't it like three weeks before the Battle of Hastings? Um, and so for the Kingdom of England, the leader was Harold Godwinson, and then for the leader of the Danes, um, it was Harold Hardrada or whatever. I'm never going to be able to pronounce it right. Again, check Maximus's video for that. He'll probably get that right. So, uh, but as you can see, this thing won with a lot of votes. Anyway, so pretty much, um, they don't know the exact location of this battlefield. And we have some stories about what exactly happened. Just quickly, just to kind of give you a rundown of what happened. Um, obviously, the, the, the Kingdom of Norway had this force that landed. Um, I don't really know, like, all the different story. Obviously, they're in England. And they're going to be confronted by the English troops near this Stamford Bridge, which they think was near a... They don't really know if it was like a bridge or a low water crossing with rock or what. There seems to be some some kind of confusion over that, but we're even honestly exactly where this took place. Uh, some people say the River Derwent or something. Yeah, if I can pronounce that right, I can't really pronounce it right. So basically for my scenario, I picked a river crossing in Central Britannia. So that's what I did. And the way I understood it, the English army crossed the river and attacked the Danes who were formed in kind of a defensive shield wall type formation. So that part we can recreate. We're going to let the English forces represented in this battle cross and attack the Danes who will be in a more defensive position. So, and uh, in real life, the English troops routed the Danes here um, and uh, obviously it was a victory for them. Uh, I don't remember if it was like super decisive or whatever else. But anyway, that's the quick history version. If you want to go read more, go look it up online or to be honest, just go listen to Maximus's video. It's really good. Um, I didn't want to repeat everything he said, though, because I want him to get credit for all the work that he put into that video, because it was a lot. Anyway, let's go jump into the battle and check out what I have for you. I'm excited to show it to you, so I'm going to switch on over. Goodbye, face cam. Hello, battle. Um, so, yep, here we go. Uh, the Battle of Stamford Bridge, my version. <laughs> check out that sweet house Carl unit there. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're going to kind of pick it up here. My teammate today is Indy Pride. Andy Pride runs his own uh, Total War Channel 2, which I will have linked, so appreciate him joining me. I haven't gotten to do anything with Indy Pride 
gosh. If I have, it's been so long that I honestly can't remember, so I'm glad to get to play a game with them. Uh, basically what I do, if you all want to join me in these, go join the Blades Balance mod, uh, or the Blades Balance buddy group, and I just go on there and post an announcement when I'm going to do these, and no matter which game I'm on, when I host the game, it's just called Air Scenario Battle. And if you want to join, just join. I mean, anybody's free to join as long as you just want to play along with the scenario we have. So anyway, uh, Indie Pride's on my side, and then across from us we have uh, V for Vandal here. Not Vendetta, but V for Vandal. Um, and then we've got uh, Positive Knowledge or something, I think was the other guy. We'll see his name at the end. But both of them very good sports coming in to play this with us. So they have crossed the river, and over here we are representing the, uh, the Norwegian... Uh, shield wall. <laughs> Not quite in shield wall yet, but we'll be representing it. Um, again, I didn't get into like all the details about the force compositions, so basically just to try and for interest's sake, if we brought a bunch of big axes and attacked them while they were crossing, it would just be an absolute slaughter. So we let the English forces cross, and the Norwegian forces here were limited to two Dane axe units each so as to allow the other factions to potentially be able to bring some more to the field. We are playing up against uh, the Kingdom of Mercia, which is commanded by, um, I believe this one was Dial V for Vandal, uh, or V for Vandal, whatever it was. <laughs> I don't know if the Dial was in there, but... And then we had uh, Westphalia here, I think, kind of representing some Saxons. Um, I, again, don't know all the history behind it. We were just trying to do this as best we could. They, they don't have, like, a Kingdom of England and a Kingdom of Norway in this game. Um, but yeah, that's what we've got. So, let's take a look at army composition. Um, in terms of skirmishers on our side, I've got four Viking Hunters. There's three Armored Archers here for Indy Pride. And then he's also got one uh, other unit, you know, Viking Hunter here, it looks like. And one Archer. So, he's got five Archers in total. My main line is four Sword Herdmen. I have uh, four... Axe Herdman. I've got one House Carl, one Big Axe, and three Levy Freeman. And then for the rest of Indy Pride's army, he's got a line of four Axe Herdman here. I see four or three Sword Herdman and a Big Axe and a House Carl. We both had a pretty similar idea here, but he's got Spearmen up front instead of Levy Freeman. And then in terms of the Westphalians, representing, I guess, the Saxons kind of here as best we can. Uh, he's got four archers up front, a bunch of spears. He's got some uh, axe band. He brought a warhound, which is kind of cool, a hearth guard unit, some more axe warriors. And over here we've got uh, four select archers. And then for the uh, Mercian army, we've got thanes and royal thanes. And these guys are going to be a pretty big problem. Hey, look, I made a shield wall. <laughs> There's something halfway historical going on here. <laughs> Attila really is a beautiful game. And honestly, the multiplayer in Kingdom of Charlemagne is pretty fun. And it's much better balanced than the base game. Although I like a lot of the factions in the base game, even though a lot of them are copy-paste, Germanic something something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what we're, we're faced up against here. I want to say there were some Sayax warriors in here somewhere too. They are, yeah. Let's check these guys out. Oh yeah, looking pretty cool. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna start a little bit of a skirmishing phase. I've got my defensive shield wall here. And uh, I believe if I heard right in the real battle, the uh, English cavalry obviously did quite a bit of work against the marauding uh, Danes. I'm gonna call them Danes here, even though I guess it was Kingdom of Norway, but I'm just gonna call them Danes. And I hope I'm not offending everybody. I usually do by accident. Yeah, the uh, skirmishing's kicked off, and it's the same thing over on Indy Pride's side of the battle. Lots of skirmishing taking place. Skirmishing's pretty important in the Kingdom of Charlemagne DLC. Archers that get left with ammo to the late game can cause significant damage to enemy cavalry and infantry. So it's much more important, and that damage can be done relatively quick sometimes. So definitely don't want to be uh, ignoring the skirmish phase of one of these battles. Of course, unless you have a good rush build. I start to gain a little advantage here in the skirmishing versus the select archers of Mercia, but it's not going to last for too terribly long. I have to kind of split up my Levy Freeman here to try and help protect my flank, and then pretty intelligently here, the uh, Mercian player is going to uh, he's going to start firing into the side of this Levy Freeman, and he's going to get a lot of kills doing it, and it's going to make it tougher for me to fight against his cavalry, and honestly, the cavalry is going to be key here if the Danes are to be defeated. The Sword Herdman... Uh, can be dealt with by the Thanes and the Royal Thanes, even if they're in Shield Wall. The, uh, especially if the Thanes and the Royal Thanes come in in Shield Wall, it is going to be a fight for our lives. 
and I'm going to need these two big axe units to help deal, or the big axe and the house carl to help deal with that. But we'll see what happens. Let's go check out Indy Pride's side of the battle. Still just a skirmish phase over here, but uh, you can see the, uh, the Saxon player, we'll call him here, even though it's Westphalia. He's going to be uh, harassing the archers a little bit with some cavalry. Andy Pride not shooting them a flaming shot here, continuing to skirmish with the uh, the archers on the other side. But definitely keeping his spears in position. No engagements yet, just lots of initial skirmishing here, which is kind of fun, honestly. I like when there's kind of like pieces to a battle here. The Saax warriors are charging, and those guys don't have much of a charge bonus, but I'll bet you they have decent armor piercing. Yes, excellent armor piercing, it says. I can't actually see it on the screen. The, um... The Mercian Cavalry now, which is several horsemen over here, has come up on my flank, and I'm moving spears into position to hold them off. And uh, This is going to be tricky for me, and like I said, some rear charges could pretty quickly end this battle, and the Danes uh, are not going to have any maneuverability, so to speak. So, battle begins between the Saax Warriors and Axe Herdman, and we got more, it looks like, veteran swords charging into these spears. And on my side, we've got some uh, Mercy and Cavalry charging in, and it's going to take right into this little gap here and go after my archers. Very nicely done while I was busy back here chasing another horseman off in the distance. You can see him being chased back there. So yeah, I'm going to have to bring in Axemen to try and chase out these cavalry. So now the skirmishing actually probably back in the favor of the Mercy and player. He's going to charge my shield walls. This is going to be as good as it can get for me. If he would have put his own guys in the shield wall and walked into combat, his thanes and royal thanes would have crushed my sword herdmen. At least I believe they would, just by the stats that I was seeing. They have better damage, and the royal thanes have incredibly good stats. Um, but yeah, my, my sword herdmen are losing regardless. Um, so I'm going to start losing the uh, cavalry, the hearth cavalry here, getting some kills on the house carls. Very nicely done. There's also archers firing in there, so taking out an important unit of Indy Pride, but Indy Pride's putting up a nice fight over here, killing the spear veterans, and his archers are still skirmishing away too, targeting down these axe warriors, which is probably a nice choice. Quite a few archers here, though, left. But my archers are, for the most part, alive, even though they're being harassed. Check out the uh, Mercy and player here. Very nice use of this gap in the line. I do get some flaming arrows off, but he's going to get through here and start harassing my archers something fierce. So I've got to bring Axemen up to help. But you can see that he has worked around my flank as well and has a, a cavalry rear charge set up here too. My general is somewhat exposed here. Kind of lucky he didn't get charged. So that English cavalry is giving us fits right now. And my sword herdmen are falling, though they've put up a very good fight because of the shield wall formation. But, I mean, there's royal companions breaking through that gap as well. I've got axe herdmen coming in to try and reinforce this fight. Right here, the royal thanes and thanes are crushing my herdmen. And then he gets a nice rear charge up here, and he's going to damage my sword herdman very badly. So I'm having to chase with spears. I did get a few of his cavalry back here, and then over on Indy Pride's side, the uh, the Saxon infantry um, putting up a tough fight, actually kind of hurting him on his flank over here. Let's get a little bit of close-up look. These spears are falling, but over on this flank, the uh, the Saxon player, the Westphalian player, is punching through. And Indy Pride is having to fall back a little bit. His general was somewhat damaged, and the Saxon cavalry is in behind his lines and could be potentially pretty dangerous here, but there are some spears for Indy Pride. After the rear charges, I was able to reinforce against his cavalry with axe units, and this is going to do quite a bit of damage to his cavalry, which I need quite badly. And then just the mainline fight, my axe herdmen are trying to reinforce, but his thanes and royal thanes still putting up a pretty sturdy fight here. And my guys are ever slowly losing the infantry fight here. So right now, not looking real good for me, but I do have a chance to turn it around. My spears are starting to pressure his archers. His cavalry is slightly out of position now. And I have more Axe Herdmen heading in. And my House Carl General is killing some of his royal horsemen. Uh, but uh, Indy Pride's kind of in a kiting mode right here. The Saxon cavalry causing some damage back here, though part of it did get routed. Um, but at this point, uh, he's definitely going to have to kind of fall back and keep shooting with his archers for a moment because there's quite a bit of Westphalian infantry left here. A little bit of cavalry left. I'm targeting them with flaming shot, trying to get rid of them, and my House Carl General here mopping up this uh, royal horseman. So at this point, I can countercharge the enemy general, which is this royal companion unit. So I'm going to send in my axe herdman. Going to get a nice flank charge. Should cause a lot of damage here. And then my house carls are now free to join the fight as well. So now the infantry fight actually starts to tilt back in my favor because I was able to actually 
save this axe herdman with some outflanking from these big axes, which, of course, in a rear charge, these guys wrecked the uh, Thanes here. So this battle was turning against me, has now actually turned back for me, and I'm going to be able to mop up the rest of the Mercian uh, troops rather handily, but, I mean, it was actually pretty close there for a minute. A couple of well-placed cavalry rear charges definitely could have swung that in favor of the Mercian player. Really liked the way he played there for the most part. I mean, just a few things allowed me to get the advantage on that. The shield wall at the beginning taking the lives of quite a few of his troops. But still, um, it was, like I said, he used his cavalry fairly well. It wasn't till the end when I finally kind of started getting a handle on him. At first, they were screwing me up pretty bad. But at this point, it's definitely going to swing in favor of the Danes, which is the opposite of history. So you ought to have something fun to watch. If you go watch Maximus's video, you'll get to see the actual historical recreation, and then you'll get to see this creation. So yes, the English army did win, but I believe that Harold's army, Harold Godwinson, went on to be defeated at the Battle of Hastings not long after that. I didn't go read up on the Battle of Hastings. Um, I, I don't remember all the details there, but I'm pretty sure that's how it ended. If I'm wrong, please feel f free to correct me. I'm not trying to be a history professor here by any means. There is one last fun engagement I want you all to see. I get to engage this hearth guard uh, and some spears with my uh, house carls which ought to be pretty fun. House Carls are just beastly infantry in this game. They're the best infantry unit in the Age of Charlemagne expansion, as far as I'm aware. And uh, the Hearth Guard is an interesting unit. It's being shot in the back right now, so uh, Indy Pride showing no mercy to these Hearth Guard. And here comes my House Carls, which will probably come in for a synchronized decapitation. Well, not quite, because it wasn't formed up in a line, but there will be some decapitation, I would assume. Well, a lot less decapitation than I expected, <laughs> but still lots of chopping, and there's nothing wrong with that. I hope you all enjoyed this uh, loose recreation of the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Do not forget to go down in the comments and vote for what you want to see in the next one. We have seen some good ideas that have gotten rather close. Some people want to see a recreation of a battle of the Coalition versus Napoleon on a big 4v4 in uh, Napoleon, and that would be all kinds of cool. Um, I do have access now... At least I'm trying to get access to the Medieval mod for Attila. And we have Medieval 2, so we could possibly be doing some recreation scenarios um, from uh, the Medieval period on either one of those that it becomes available in time, so we could do something like that. Um, Empire Total War, if we want to do some uh, some historical matchups or just crazy matchups there. Um, Rome 2, all that. It's all it's all up for grabs. You all make... this. That's what I want this series to be. You vote, you decide, and I'll go do it for you. So I want it to be as interactive as possible. Anyway, this is fun. So here, here's my numbers. I deployed 2,040 men, lost 1,074 of them, had 966 remaining. Indy Pride with 19, 20, 14, 11, and 569. So Indy Pride lost quite a few men here. Didn't have a ton remaining, but did a good job to keep that battle rolling and didn't let anything get wrapped up on that flank. V for Vandal here, I thought did a good job. Deployed quite a few fewer troops than me. And like I said, he was getting pretty close to giving me fits. If he would have just put his Thanes and Royal Thanes and Shield Wall and walked them into my Sword Herdman Shield Wall, I'm pretty sure he would have wrecked my front line and I would have had a very difficult time taking him down, I think, in the end. His cavalry use at the beginning I thought was very clever. And uh, this Royal Horseman here actually racked up a lot of kills. Um, then if we take a look at positive knowledge here, um, he let's see what you need. The Warhounds, that was cool. He didn't get a ton of kills with him, but always fun to see units like that show up. Saxon Cavalry, eh, you know, a decent amount of kills. I don't know how much they cost. May not have been worth it. But some of his infantry actually picking up some decent numbers here, considering what they were up against. 126 kills on a spear veteran. So I don't know what he got a hold of with it, but interesting. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Make sure and go check out Indy Prize channel if you want to see some more Total War content. And of course, please go check out Maximus's video also. It is definitely worth watching. Air of Carthage signing out for now, and I will see you all back on the next Scenario Battle video.